The Greater Louisville Medical Society, as a professional association for doctors, gives them an opportunity to come together and work on problems in the community that improve the health and well-being for everyone. The Wear the White Coat program is the most exciting thing. It's complete immersion into the practice of medicine. What we do is we pair up community leaders, CEOs, small and large business owners, legislators, reporters, journalists, we pull them together and we pair them with a physician of a particular specialty and we give them an opportunity to put on a white coat and walk in the shoes of a physician and actually see patients all day long. What we really wanted to accomplish is we wanted to shine a light on healing. Every day we have doctors, our silent heroes in the community out there saving lives and we don't feel like the regular community gets to see that. Um, unless you're a healthcare professional, you don't know what it's like to actually walk in the shoes of a medical doctor and see patients all day. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Sure, we're looking forward to a good day today. David is the president of the Louisville Metro Council. He was one of those folks that is obviously in a, in a great position to make decisions for the city. We reached out to him and he was very excited about doing it. Hi, so nice to see you. Good to see you. Attorney Sarah Spurlock uh, did our program. I think it's interesting for a lawyer to actually participate uh, and, and actually shadow a physician and see what's kind of happening on the other side. I mean, she deals with cases all day long, but then to actually go in and yes. see it herself, I think was really particularly eye-opening for her. It's been very interesting. Hello. Hi, Ms. Shaker. Well, is this your physical or this is just a follow this up all apart? Okay. But so. I did have my surgery August the 30th. How'd you do? It was the easiest thing I've ever had done in my life. I'm really glad to hear that. The thing that struck me the most is just the speed at which everything is moving. I know. She's clicking and talking and typing and listening and trying to make eye contact and maintain a relationship with the patient while you know trying to be efficient and get through the day and stay on schedule. The most surprising thing, I was not expecting to learn actual skills of like taking blood pressure and you know taking part in the exams. I didn't get as much time. <laughs> no, hers, hers, her pulse, so how would you describe her pulse when you take it? Soft. Soft. It is really pretty much not real palpable and uh, it just is and it doesn't mean anything some people are you know her brain works fine everything is fine but you just have a little soft pulse instead of a real hard pulse so it's hard to hear to be able to put on the coat and walk into the waiting room you find the patient in a very humbled state obviously they're needing care it okay. hurts a little bit but I can do it. It gives me a lot of respect and admiration for the doctor um, who they depend on to be able to quickly diagnose. Yeah. Yeah, that hurts. Okay. In my elbow. In your elbow? In my elbow. Okay. Do you have a primary care physician that you can see? Okay. I don't have any insurance. Okay. Have you tried to enroll what, with the uh, Affordable did. Care Act? They tell me $400 a month. For your insurance? Yes. Okay. I, can't that. I think we're going to have a counselor come and talk to you about some options uh, to help with that. All right. The problem is even the folks who are covered, a lot of them have health insurance, but they don't have health care because we didn't expand the provider force to see these people. We just covered them with insurance. They're not doing the same thing as just me. Okay. When did it hit you? This morning at 6.50, 7 o'clock. Vomiting and diarrhea bone. Which started first? Vomiting. Okay. We're going to get some things going and get you feeling better. We need to get some tests done so we can see what's going on with this. Sounds okay. Good. All right. Let's know if you need anything. Okay. All right. If you see your family doctor, uh, they appropriately think, well, what's the most common thing this could be? In emergency medicine, we're trained completely differently. We think about, okay, what's the most likely thing that's going to kill him? So then we rule out all the bad things to begin with, and if it turns out it's something simple, that's great. You know, we can treat that, but we approach it kind of from the opposite direction that family medicine people will because we think about things like aneurysms and, you know, Resolve appendicitis. Right, first. exactly. That's, we, we look for that to begin with and come at it from that approach. 
Given the amount of regulation that there is for physicians and healthcare providers that I'm familiar with, because that's you know the area that I work in, I've always um, said I just don't understand how they have time to really care for patients. But it's clear that that is a part of the day, you know, making sure that the patient's information is is correct. The electronic medical records make it easier. Or? They make it easier for every single doctor, like the immediate care center, who sees my patient because their whole life story is in here. What they're allergic to, what they've had before, they can look and see. Oh, last time they had this, we gave them this, and that's helpful. What I do is process information and make a decision, and process information and make a decision. You know, over and over and over and over. At the speed but, of light. At the speed of light, but then everybody is different, and at the same time, there is a relationship. You, you know, you have to do this with a person that you know, and it not just, you know, a cipher. How is your dad? Is your dad okay? He's good. He's, He's good. trying to bide his time till next year, so he doesn't have to <laughs> pay any copay. <laughs> okay, that sounds like your dad. It's clear that she has a very strong relationship with her patients. A lot of them commented about the length of time they've been seeing Dr. Barry. They all have you know, great things to say about um, the care that she provides and how much trust they have in her. You have to give me your solemn word of honor. If your voice does not go back to normal, right. I need to have an ENT doctor look at your okay. vocal cords and make sure you'll have a vocal cord cancer or some awfulness right. going on. Mr. Trice, hi there. Good, I'm Dr. Couch. How are you doing? Pretty good. I had a 24 hour flu. Uh, I woke up with a little fever. I'm feeling a, little, a lot better today. Okay. And I tried to go to work, and my boss told me if I can go out here and get checked. You know? Okay. All right. Um, so this started yesterday? This morning. Okay. This morning, maybe. 12, okay. One or two in the morning. Okay. What kind of symptoms have you been having? I just had a little fever, mm -hmm. and I was dehydrated. Okay. All right. Your temperature was normal yes, sir. out front. That looks good. You know, that's not the best candidate to come to the emergency department. And he's someone who had a primary care physician but just thought he would come here instead of going to see his doctor because, you know, we're easy to get into, we're always open, we're just faster. So I guess we're a victim of our own success here. <laughs> Obviously a very expensive um, place to come for, for a very basic treatment. And I think part of that was just needing to educate. Being on the Metro Council, uh, we're the grassroots of the political process. And, and one thing that we can do that a lot of people higher up can't do is we have direct contact with our constituents and we can educate. So what I hope to do is take my experience here today and try to educate my constituent base so that they may find better, uh, more efficient ways to stay healthy. I think it, it's always good to have context, you know, just a better appreciation for kind of how, how it works on the other side of things. Typically, I. I, I work with physicians or other healthcare providers on you know issues that they may have that impacts one part of their day or I'm maybe in the role of the patient and I come in and I'm just you know here for my visit and um, sitting in the waiting room you know <laughs> wondering why everything's behind schedule and you know so now I, I think I have a, uh, a better appreciation just for the context of it all. Uh, Bert and I will take uh, microphones around to the table. What I ask is After you've had your experience, all of the participants and their physicians come to a dinner. We have a wonderful meal together, and then we pass around a microphone, and it's that simple. There's no agenda other than passing it around and seeing what folks have to say. My experience, you know, Dr. Mary treated me just like she would have um, an intern or a medical student, and so it was really um, a fascinating experience, and I, I appreciate Dr. Berry and the Greater Louisville Medical Society for giving me the, the chance to participate. The whole country is having a debate about health care, and really one of the beauties of this program is that it's really not political. We're not trying to accomplish a political agenda here, but we do want people to be more well informed about what's really happening, so that way they can actually be educated about what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, in this program, I promise you, will open your eyes to all of the various complexities and issues that are going on in health care. You're going to see heartache, anxiety, you're going to see pain met with warm smiles, incredible bedside manner, and a deep, passionate desire to heal others.